Well, good morning from another beautiful day in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. We're still so excited to be back in Canada and our home province. And today we're back at our tiny house. And I'm not sure if some of you guys, anyway, know if we have one. Yeah, a lot of you guys we picked up over the course of the last probably nine months or so, <laughs> Dominican Republic, Vietnam, and you might not have known that we own a tiny house, mm -hmm. but a lot of you have been along uh, here for a long time, along for the ride. Yep. You know we have a tiny house, but maybe you're thinking to yourself, looking in the background and saying, it looks a little bit different. <laughs> so throughout the course of the video, we're going to be going through some of the changes, some major changes to our tiny house since you last saw it. But we're also going to be talking about some of the major benefits of going tiny and why we decided to build a tiny house. Also, by the way, if you happen to be new around here, my name is Anna. Trevor is behind the camera. We are the Delightful Travelers. Before you do anything else, please hit that subscribe button and also give this video a like that really helps things out. So we ended up moving our tiny house this year. It is still in Cape Breton, but it's in a different part of Cape Breton. It's now up in South Harbor in the Highlands at Blue Bayou Resort. We're so excited about that. We're going to talk about why we moved it as we go throughout the video because a lot of you are curious, but just take a look at this. And well, some of you that watched last year, you probably noticed there's a big, big addition to this place now. Yes, this is at a resort. We're going to show you around the whole premises. We don't actually live in our tiny house. We spend a probably a couple weeks here throughout the course of the entire year. Maybe someday we will look into moving into it full time, but that means that you can actually stay here. It's rented out per night. We'll put a link in the description below if you want to book it. Now we'd love if some of them would come and stay here, but let's get into this patio. Look at this. Yes. We call this kind of the outside tiki bar, don't we? The tiki bar, it is the tiki bar. This addition to our tiny house is just over the top. Stefan, one of the owners of Blue Bio Resort, came up with this whole idea and boy did he knock it out of the park. Honestly, how good does this look paired with our tiny house? Isn't it cool? I love it. For those of you that did watch last year, you might recall that we didn't really have anything outside. So all our yeah. stuff was just kind of sitting on the grass and we said, oh, maybe we'll eventually build a deck. But of course, everything changed and now yeah. the tiny house is here and this is absolutely <laughs> amazing i love the inside of our tiny house but now the outside kind oh, of matches no. it this is kind of everything we dreamed of yeah. you'll see the inside soon we'll show you guys again and how about this addition we have some nice wooden bar stools right here at the tiki bar and what's your cocktail order <laughs> i like it yeah <laughs> let's give you a quick little tour as well so we also have a barbecue out here and you might have noticed that this is covered so if it does rain hopefully it doesn't but if it does you can still come out here and barbecue and sit down. So this is our picnic table here, perfect for eating dinner, eating lunch, eating your barbecue basically. <laughs> and then over here, this is actually another new addition that we did not have at our last place and I am honestly so excited <laughs> about this. I love the tiki bar, I love this as well. Those chairs we had before, they're neat little chairs, they're like plastic but they have cup holders on them. But you can sit there and have a fire. So let's talk about why we went tiny in Nova Scotia. Why we bought a tiny house, why maybe you should think about going tiny yourself. There's many reasons for it, financial reasons of course, and for us anyway, we travel a lot and we just love a smaller space because then we have less stuff. We like having less stuff and we'll talk a little bit about that. But first, just a little bit of background for people that uh, don't don't know, that are just tuning in for the first time and don't really know what we did. So we got stuck here during the pandemic, mm -hmm. stuck at home like most people. Property prices went way, 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 way up. They're yeah. still way up there. And we ended up selling our condo that we'd owned for a few years, made a little bit of profit off that. So we bought another condo, a smaller condo, much smaller. You can find that in video. In Halifax. It. In Halifax, <laughs> yeah. But you can find videos about that back in our channel. And then we use the leftover money to build this tiny house. Yeah, and we're so happy with our decision. And just because we travel so much and now we've decluttered so much, yeah. it's just so easy to kind of come back to our places here uh, when we are in the province because we kind of live out of suitcase. We do. So when we travel <laughs> almost full time, we live out of ca uh, what each have a carry-on <laughs> carry size suitcase and a backpack. And it makes you learn to live with less. It does. And even when we come back, we'll be like, why do we have, we don't own that much stuff. We're interrupting this video to quickly talk about this week's sponsor, Babbel. So you guys know we travel a lot. And one of the biggest challenges we face when we're traveling is learning a new language. <laughs> so you guys also know that we've spent a lot of time in the Dominican Republic. And because of that, we actually did pick up a little 
bit of Spanish, but now that we're no longer there, sadly, each day we're losing it a little bit. So Babbel's here to help because we're going to be using this app every day going forward. Babbel is a language learning service with a human-based approach to language learning. With the Babbel method, you'll learn more than just vocabulary. So one major issue we've had with other language learning programs and apps in the past is that you kind of learn like different words and a few different phrases, but you don't really learn how to speak or converse with anybody. Their secret is real language teachers. Babbel lessons are created by native language experts to teach learners of all levels how to have real world conversations. Babbel has so many different ways to learn. There's an app, live online tutoring classes. There are games, podcasts, and even magazine articles. So I think the favorite part for me is using the app. It's actually a lot of fun. And of course you can use it on the go when you're sitting in the dentist's office or maybe in an airport. But my favorite part is probably <laughs> cultural bites is learn more of the language with these fun cultural facts. So you get into learning language bits. So we thought it would be fun to try out some of the phrases we've been working on. Remember, we're just learning here, but here we go. Nos encanto cuando nos deja un comentario. Huh? Good job. So if you have the will and ambition to start learning a new language, Babbel is the way to go. And now you can take advantage of their special offer. Click the link in the description below to get 30% off Babbel courses for six months 12 months or lifetime access. A big thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us. Well, let's give you guys a quick little tour of the inside. And if you do want to see the full in-depth tour, we did one last year on our channel. We went through literally everything in this place and the reasons why we did stuff and all the background basically. But here we'll just do a little quick one. This is our living room area. You're probably gonna find it's way more spacious inside than you thought. Most people think of tiny houses as being like really confined and restricting, but we find this really open. There's loads of windows. Love the space, it's nice and bright. This is a sofa that actually turns into a sofa bed. It's kind of a, I'd say a small double. You can probably fit a couple kids on there. Um, and then another little seating area over here. And also just some storage. We like having a little table when you walk in just to put some stuff basket with shoes underneath and then additional seating over here. So right above the additional storage over here is a place to hang your coats, hang some of your clothing items. That's what we have going on over there right now. We didn't clean up too much. You probably see this beautiful staircase right here. There's storage in here. So we got some board games, some books. This leads to the loft. We'll take you up there as well. But way in the back, you probably see where we eat. It's the dining room table, but we, not gonna lie, use it more as a desk. So I have a workstation <laughs> kind of set up there, but we love it. It has a nice view out the window. And honestly, we're just, so happy with the space you guys it's been a year we've been gone for like a year and we've come back and this place is as beautiful as we remember so here we are a little bit more up close with our dining slash working area love these custom countertops this was a, a wood countertop love them so much and we also did like a lot of shelving just to really take advantage of all the extra space everywhere a little coffee station <laughs> on this side i know on the other side we're storing some plates now there is lots of uh, storage in some of the cupboards so there's more plates than glasses there there are there's loads of storage in this kitchen to be honest uh, and if you are looking to cook we do have a two burner what do you call these the cooktop and then we also have down here you can just it's easy to pick up and bring it up onto the counter it's a toaster oven but also does like air frying and a whole bunch of things so you can basically make pretty much anything in there and now look at the faucet though we made sure to pick out kind of all these black finishings we got a nice sink love, love the sink as well of course there is a fridge over here we we're actually talking a lot about this fridge lately because it's a super nice fridge it's really well like laid out sometimes you get these fridges and there's like one shelf that nothing fits on i feel like this one was super well designed and i know a lot of tiny houses might have like a full fridge here i think if we were to live here we'd probably keep this fridge i think so. it honestly makes you think about what you're consuming you only buy mm -hmm. what you need and not wasting food so i don't yeah. know if they can tell but it's actually like a mini fridge just kind of above some cupboards it fits there great it fits perfectly so i'll take you guys to the bathroom now first of all there's a nice pocket door so it gets right out of the way because you need all the space you can have we have a sink and now we have an actual toilet there's no longer a composting toilet here so that toilet is by far the biggest change we've made inside the tiny house so now i hope some of you guys are a little less intimidated by the composting toilet because last year we got a lot of messages and let's be honest people are composting toilets are handy when you don't have another solution but now we have a real toilet so we're pretty stoked about that as well right over this way you can see the shower as well and that is a full stand-up corner unit shower right in this tiny little 
tiny house. So if you're wondering about the size of our tiny house, I think it's like 285 square feet. It's about eight and a half or nine by 24 long. All right, we'll take you guys upstairs here. And yeah, there is a uh, handrail, so that comes in handy to get up. We, we actually stayed in some tiny houses that don't have that handrail. And honestly, it's kind of scary without it. It's perfect with it. It's really easy to get up. Up here in the loft, it's probably more spacious than you would have imagined. I can actually sit up. Maybe not down there, but you're gonna be lying down. It is the bedroom area. We have a queen size bed here. It's a very, very comfortable mattress. You might wonder like, does it get hot up here? It's really convenient having a window on each side. You get a really, really nice cross breeze, even on hot days. And just in case we put a little fan up there on the railing. There's also some storage in the back. There's some plugs, there's even USB plugs like built right into the plugs. It's very convenient. Okay, let's talk about why we moved the tiny house. That has been the question that we are probably yeah. getting asked the most. And we loved where it was last year. It was in a great oh, location. Yeah. Uh, it was near Inverness. We loved beautiful. that. And there was a beautiful private beach just down the road, which was amazing. <laughs> but it didn't quite work out the way we wanted it. Yeah, I mean, that's how it goes. There was many reasons it didn't work out. But really what it came down to is um, there was someone proper, property managing our which place. We, we require because we're traveling all the time and we just don't have enough time to look after cleanings and bookings and all yeah. that stuff. So it's and great to have someone else to do it. <laughs> it is, but what happened was they just weren't able to do it anymore. So that left us uh, with a, just kind of a tough decision, I guess, or kind of really a scrambling decision. While we were, were in the Dominican Republic, we yeah. were trying to figure out where to move the tiny house. <laughs> so we actually thought over like, where can we possibly move this? We really wanted to keep it in Cape Breton. We needed again to find property managers. Yeah. We just can't do that ourselves. And we thought of this place, Blue Bayou. We stayed here two years ago. We do have videos on staying here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stefan and Shan Shan were awesome to work with. They're so nice. We, they're such nice people. And we thought, I wonder if they'd be interested in having the tiny house here. <laughs> and we sent them an email. And honestly, they emailed back, I think within minutes and said, what an awesome idea. They so, loved it. It, we now it is here but it was a process it got processed to get here you guys because what ended up happening i'll try to long story short our tiny house is on a trailer so it means it can be moved so that's convenient in general they don't, all tiny houses don't have to be on trailers but we wanted ours to be in case something like this happened the trailer ended up being registered to the company that built it meaning when i said registered for the dmv it's considered like a vehicle the trailer is like a vehicle the house is separate mm -hmm. so when we tried to move it it turned out the trailer wasn't in our name and then we had we were left scrambling yeah, again. So we didn't have the proper registration basically to have it on the road. Oh, so I have to give a big shout out and a thank you to my parents because this never would have happened without them. I think them. his dad went to the DMV like maybe 10 times. Thanks dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean they handled everything. I don't we don't know what we do without them, yeah. but eventually we got it all sorted. Mm -hmm. Now the trailers in our name and then we could actually move but we hired a company. They took it for 2 hours up some of the biggest mountains yeah. in Nova Scotia in the Highlands. That made us nervous. You don't want this to tip off a cliff or anything like that. Yeah, so just going back to like, what are the benefits of having a tiny house, having a tiny house in Nova Scotia. Having it on a trailer is super oh. convenient. How many houses can you put on a trailer and move it? <laughs> you can it? move. Like imagine if you can move your big house wherever you want in different yeah. locations. It's pretty cool having one of these. One of the major benefits for us about being here at Blue Bayou is that it's literally right on the water. They have a bunch of kayaks, Paddle boards. You can see people out on the stand-up paddle boards right now. You go swimming, out in a canoe. The water is super calm. This is like kind of a little inlet, so you don't have to feel too nervous about like big waves or anything like that. There are also some pretty incredible beaches nearby as well. The other thing about this place is the highlands are like right in the background there, but they're not going to look like much, especially on this camera, unfortunately. <laughs> but trust us, in person, they look incredible. So if staying at domes is not your thing, don't worry. There are other spots that you can stay at here. There are different RVs that you can rent. They're dubbed as kind of shacks, just like our delightful tiny shack. But check out this one behind me. This is the boogie shack. This is really cool. It's red and it has a patio that's kind of similar to ours. It's just so unique. I also noticed that if you happen to have like an RV yourself, you can just roll up here in one of the spots and stay for the night. So they have options pretty much for everybody. Let's take a look at the boogie shack though. I love the color of that and look. So cool. It's a vintage RV. So it's like kind of a reddish color, but like out here he's built this whole space. Then you have a shower and a washroom here and then like the outdoor kitchen. They also have a little bar area here yeah. and a barbecue. Yeah, this is so unique. Again, it reminds so me fun. of ours a little bit. A little bit. It's different and it's just fun that you have all these options here. Yeah. One of the things we absolutely love about where our tiny house is right now, just look at it back there being all cute, is the location and somehow we forgot to tell you where exactly it is. It's inside a national park. Well, 
like this close. Yeah, it's about a minute drive to be inside Cape Breton Highlands National Park. Most amazing, one of my, it's gotta be one of the top oh, national yeah. parks in all. I mean, Canada has some amazing national parks, this but one. it's one of the absolute best. You can be out driving the Cabot Trail. You can go on all these major nature hikes, visit lakes, visit amazing look-offs. If, if you guys don't know what the Cabot Trail is in Cape Breton Island, look it up. Picture the highlands of Scotland. There's ocean everywhere, and it's just pure epicness everywhere you go. So it's one of our favorite things. But speaking of our favorite things, or one of our other favorite things to do, we like barbecuing and just eating outside now. Yeah, being here in the evening is some of the best time to be. <laughs> you can go and explore during the day and come back come here back. and make dinner. And speaking of that, well, we're gonna do that right now. Well, for us, not right now, but for, for you. you guys in a few <laughs> seconds. Well, right now. Well, now it's a little bit later and we're uh, gonna try to get this fire going. And you might wonder if someone like ourselves can Get a campfire going. We travel a lot. We don't do this too much, but I'm gonna do my best here. It's a little windy. There's lots of flies out, so we need this going. Anna's inside. We're gonna be eating very soon, but let's let's just see if I can actually make this happen. I don't know if I can. I have the uh, crisscross kind of effect happening here. So some paper on the bottom, kind of some of that wood kindling, I guess, that will should burn a little easier and then a big piece of kind of birch on the top, so we'll see what happens. I also found a great little kind of poker fire stick that's gonna help add more of this. Feeling good about it tonight. I'm feeling really good about it. Anna's inside cooking. We'll go check what she's up to in just a second. Well, I was inside, but I guess I beat Trevor to the punch. and got the uh, potatoes ready there now on the grill. You uh -huh. can't see them because they're all wrapped in tin foil. <laughs> kind of threw like a mishmash of stuff together. Yeah, so it's our last night here, so we'll it's, we're just kind of putting together everything we have. What else do we got? We have burgers, but Beyond Meat burgers. If anybody else is a huge fan of Beyond Meat, we're, we really like them a lot. So we're gonna have that. Throw some, I guess, random, again, random things on top of the burger. We'll see how they turn out and have a side of potatoes. The food here on the grill is looking perfect in the light at this time of night in the summer here in Nova Scotia, in Canada. You can't beat it. And, well, here we go. Our potatoes turned out really well. And then we have our Beyond Meat. It's a veggie burger, but it's loaded up with some onions, bacon, and sriracha mayo. You guys ready to try it? I know we are. I'm gonna give this a try. I don't know if you guys noticed that we're eating a vegetarian burger with bacon on it. Oh yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> you can laugh at us, but I don't know, there's something about Beyond Meat burgers that are really good. I'm not a big beef fan, so it's a good alternative, but I do love some bacon. <laughs> the question is, I, I do wonder how good it's going to be. Because mm. we are cooking with some leftovers right now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's gonna live up to the hype. I think we're gonna have to take another bite to get all the all the good stuff, it's all really in the middle, but that was definitely a good first bite. We got some really good buns, I think they're brioche buns. Love the uh, Beyond Meat, we got some cheese on there, onions, and there is some sriracha mayo and bacon on there, but yeah, another bite. What I like about this burger, when, whenever we have Beyond Meat, it's just nice and light. Like it's not too heavy. I'm sure that makes sense because it is a vegan burger after all, but with the bun, it's nice and pillowy, nice and soft. We did put some real bacon on there, it's really good. Sriracha mayo rounds it out and we got some Havarti cheese, which is always, always so creamy. So perfect kind of burger. And our potatoes have turned out really well. Look at these things. We didn't know how long to cook them for. We figured about a half hour. We cut them kind of uh, nice and thin, and well, these are gonna do the trick. Okay, let's continue the topic of why you maybe should consider at least, or just do it, buy a tiny house in Nova Scotia or anywhere for that matter. Now, we just happen to love living in small spaces we travel a lot, and if we didn't, we still could live in this space. I'm gonna say that before we're about to say what we're going to say. Partially, the reason we bought this place that I'm looking at, you guys can't see it right now, is because it's some rental income for us. We travel a lot and we can make some money with it. We do, so a lot of people, we always get the question of how do you afford to travel? You must be rich, and that's what people <laughs> assume is that we just must, must make or have loads and loads of money, and that's yeah. not the case at all. We have worked very, very hard to get where we are very now, hard. and. One of the things that we've tried to work on is having multiple income streams. So mm -hmm. we have a web design company, we have our YouTube channel that you're watching us right now and helping support us just by watching. And then we rent out our condo in Halifax when we're traveling and then we have now have this. Yeah, so we have worked very hard at that and a lot of people sometimes watch our, watch our videos and they say like you're very lucky to be able to do this and we appreciate that but 
I just want you guys to know that it's not all about luck. We, we worked at this for years. Okay. Like When you work at something for years and years and years and you hear the word luck, like, I wish. <laughs> but that's not the case. But we just, it's about multiple income streams. And we realized that, like, at least a decade ago, that that's kind of where the world's going. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you can be a digital nomad now with ease. And, and try this out because I mean you could have a full-time job but still people get laid off you know there's things that happen that's how we ended up doing what we do but look this fire is starting to really smoke but it still looks pretty cool but <laughs> can I also point out that it's 9 p.m. right now in Nova Scotia it's still nine very much light out. how I love is it. that I know we're very north and it's still not gonna get We're not dark. even that far north. <laughs> we meet so many people when we're traveling that think we are way up in like as far north as you can yeah, get in Canada. True. We're definitely not. That's true a lot of people think we're like Basically, in the, for any Canadians watching, they think we're in the territories, you know, and, and we're not. But we are a little jealous of how warm it stays in, in, in the northern, uh, let's say, the UK and the European countries, where it's, it doesn't really seem to snow sometimes, and for some reason it's warmer than here. Yes. Why is that? Jet the sun, streams. The sun is jet streams, but the sun sets at like 11 p.m. or 12. And I think, lastly, one of the major, major benefits of buying a tiny house anywhere in the world is how affordable it is, especially with housing prices going up and up and up, especially here in Nova Scotia. They've just gone crazy. It could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars just to buy a home here, but it does not cost that much for a tiny house. You're looking at, you know, we're talking about a housing crisis here. So it's a really good option, something that governments should be considering as well. I think by now you guys see these cool lights we have up here under the Tiki Bar. These are solar lights, believe it or not, but they look like those cool kind of retro patio lights. They don't get too warm. We have a little solar panel kind of hanging out up there and that powers everything here. Just like one day of sunshine with ease gives you all this light. Oh, well now it's actually starting to look <laughs> dark out. I know. Believe and it or not. Look at the, uh, you can see those solar lights behind this. It mm -hmm. looks pretty good in the camera. Cameras never look good at night. It looks, doesn't look too bad right now. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're gonna sit down and enjoy this fire. It's starting yeah. to get a little bit cooler out. It is. And you know, this is, uh, you guys are probably watching this a little bit later than the month we're actually in. It's uh, always a little bit <laughs> in the YouTube world. It's mid to late <laughs> July. And it should be really hot. It's it's let's call it moderately hot. We've we were used to the Dominican Republic. You guys know this, and Turks and Caicos, and Vietnam, and all the hot weather. But mm -hmm. here we are. We, we love it either way because we're back in Canada, and it's summer, and it's hard to beat that. Yeah, and we're in our our guess our happy place here in Nova Scotia. Yeah, mm -hmm. we love being back in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. We know all a lot of you guys picked us up when we were here, kind of stuck during COVID. Yeah, and we thank you for that. And if you happen to be new and you're still like wondering who we are, it's Trevor, Anna. Delightful travelers, hit the subscribe button, click like, all that stuff. The smoke's coming our way, so we yeah. might get... They're just following us. <clears throat> we do have more videos coming up here in Nova Scotia. Yeah, I think we'll probably be here in Cape Breton in the next video. Yeah, another reminder that you can actually book this place if you want to stay mm -hmm. here. So uh, by the time you're watching this, there's, this goes probably till October. Yeah, I mean, uh, but we will also be linking all those stuff in the description below. Yes, so that's right below here if you're watching on the computer. If you're watching on a TV, you're gonna have to get off your TV and just go to your computer and you'll figure the I feel rest out. like we're out. losing the light as we talk. <laughs> we are, but for now, we're just gonna take it easy, finish up our tidal bay wine, mm -hmm. enjoy the Cape Breton Highlands. Yes. I love it enjoy here. Enjoy your fireplace, enjoy your tiny house. All that stuff, but thank you guys for watching, as always, and uh, we can't wait to share more of our Nova Scotia series. All right, guys, that's it. From the Cape Breton Highlands, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.